Hello, my name is Glenn Ingle. I'm the developer of Crew Timer Regatta Timing. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Crew Timer Progression Engine add-on for Google Sheets. This is an add-on that helps you do progressions from heats to finals for your regatta. Let's get started. Here's a typical spreadsheet you might have for your regatta with your lineups for an event. The first thing I'm going to do is install the extension. That's found under Extensions, Add-ons, Get Add-ons. Search for Crew Timer, and you'll find the Progression Engine add-on. Once you install it, it shows up under the Extensions menu. Extensions, Crew Timer Progression Engine, Open Sidebar. Once you open the sidebar, it shows up on the right-hand side. The first time you run it, it wants you to confirm your mobile credentials. These are the same credentials you would use for your mobile device. I'm going to put in some test credentials here. Once I log in, it reads this, the spreadsheet and presents a summary of the events in your regatta. This is a two-day regatta, so I've got two tabs, one for Saturday and one for Sunday. You'll notice that some of these icons are green and some are blue. The green icons indicate that a race has been declared official. That's usually required in order to do progressions. These other races have a star indicating that they are not uh, something that needs to be progressed. A straight final without heats or finals would be a star as well. So the little play icon is your clue that this is involved in a progression. Now if we look at the configuration of the spreadsheet, we'll see that for event 1, there's an H1 tag here indicating it's heat 1. And for event 2, we've got an H2 indicating that it's H2. That is all the information that Crew Timer needs in order to do progressions for a basic regatta. Under the Help tab, there's more information about other tabs, other suffixes that are allowed to control the progressions quarterfinals, semifinals, and time finals. Let's do our first progression. I'm going to click on the One Men's Varsity event, and we'll see a summary of what Crew Timer thinks about this. It says down here in bracket races that there are two heats that are going to advance to event nine for the final. The advancement method is automatic, and Crew Timer has chosen the top three to advance. If this is not to your liking, you can click the drop down and change to another advancement type. For example, if I select one, two, Crew Timer will complain and say, hey, you've only used four of your six lanes, so you may want to pick a different one. For now, I'll go back to automatic. So all we need to do to see this race is click on the button. Crew Timer looks at the finish times for the entries in this race, it knows the placement, first, second, and third, and assigns lanes. Here we see the first two places have been assigned lanes three and four. So it's doing it inside out where lanes three and four have priority. Once I click apply, Crew Timer will take the crews and populate them in the spreadsheet. If I scroll down to event nine, see we have placeholders, TBD for the crew. Not sure why this three here is. So I'm going to delete that. So when I click on apply, Crew Timer will now populate the crew related information for event nine. Now at this point, only the spreadsheet has been updated. The mobile device and Crew Timer Cloud have not been informed of this change. In the normal manner that Crew Timer uses, you would do a refresh lineups in your admin API. To assist with that, there's a button here, Update Cloud, which does the same function. Let me show the results website real quick here. On the right hand side, we see the results for this regatta. If we scroll down to event nine, we see we've got TBD still for the crews. So I'm going to click on Update Cloud which will push the spreadsheet information up to Crew Timer Cloud, which will then refresh the page. And we come down here, we'll see Event 9 
now has assigned crews and lanes. So at this point, the final for this is ready to run. Let's look at a little bit more advanced example. If we look down here on event three, look at that, we see we have four heats going in to two semifinals. When I click on the button, we'll see the proposed seating for this particular progression. In this case, instead of one event, we have two destination events for the two semifinals. And we see that the preferred lanes, lane three and four, have first place winners that are pulled from the four heats. And similarly, the second and third place are populated. We click on apply, again, the spreadsheet will be populated with these results. And here it is here. And again, we can push the update cloud to push this to the, to the cloud. Let's look at another case. Let's say that Sunday all events were canceled because of weather. In this case, maybe we went, although we've done the heats, we haven't done the final for this event. So we want to turn it into a timed final. So let's go down to event nine. And we'll just tag this here as a timed final. We'll notify crew timer we've changed things. Update the list. Now if we go look at one of these events, we'll see that it's flagged as a timed final. And it wants us to log in. The reason for that is we're actually for a timed final, we're going to push times up to crew timer cloud and change the website. So I'm going to press the login button. And what you don't see on the screen was an off-screen window that asked me to log in. Now I'm going to see the race. I'll have the same result, of course, but let me sort by time, because this is going to be a timed final now. So we see that first place should be lane 1, then lane 3, then 5, 2, 4, 6. So let's apply those, and we'll watch what happens here on the website. Again, one, three, five, two, four, six. Apply. And now we see times have been received by the website and the lanes have been updated. One, three, five, two, four, six. And that indicates placement one, two, three, four, five, six, of course. So that's how you do a time final. Let's take a look at some of the other menu items. Here under the Settings tab, we can see our mobile ID. We can change it if necessary. And we have default lane mappings that Crew Timer uses to assign lanes. These can be edited using the Edit Lane Mappings button. Here we have the default distribution method. This is used when you're distributing to more than one event, for example, to semifinal A, uh, event one and two. Um, there's three different ways this can be done, reversing is the normal one for crew racing, although you can also do round robin and random. You can look at the help text to see exactly what these do. You can also relax the requirement for being official before seeding. This is normally used when you're just testing and playing around with crew timer and you want to see what it's going to propose. Finally, you can edit the advancement methods that are available. So there's a list here. You can sort this list to be meet your preferences, and you can add new ones to the list also to suit your needs. The advancement methods are used when the automatic advancement is selected in Crew Timer. It goes down the list looking for one that best matches the setup that you have. So this is a priority order. Finally, as I mentioned before, there's a little bit of uh, in-app help. There's also quick links to go to the results website, a quick link to go to the admin website, and more detailed progressions help with this button here. Finally, let me give one more tip. 
on the event info field, some regattas like to populate that with information such as, say, top three to final. I'll do that down here, top three to final. Uh, this also acts as a hint to clue timer about how the progression should be done. So, for example, if I change this to top two to final, and now I update my list, and I go back and take a look at this first event, I'll get a notice here that it's using the event info, one to two events, but it's going to say, hey, you may not want to use that because you're only allocating four or six lanes. So I can also change this to, say, top two plus uh, one best time. And add that one here. If these aren't the same, crew timer will complain. Now if I update the list, you'll see I've got one to two plus one best times. I guess I should have really made that two here. So crew timer's helping me out on the math. There we go. Now it's happy with it. I don't have any warnings. And so if I see that race, that's what it'll use. Crew Timer has a fairly flexible recognition engine for the event info as well as the event names. So for example, I could say Heat 1 instead of H1. So it's sort of up to you how you want to spell things. Well, that's the grand summary of Crew Timer progression add-on for Google Sheets. I hope you found it useful and will be using it in your next regatta. Thanks for watching.